kind of reminds me back in the, when I was teaching second and third grade, that, that dreaded period after lunch recess, right? Everyone comes in, nobody wants to pay attention, they're thinking about other stuff, and then, then when you get into the older grades, they smell too, but, um, you know, so, you know, in preparation, so first of all, what a wonderful event. You know, th these last two days have been energizing. Uh, the last session that I was in, uh, somebody described it as overwhelming, um, but in a good way. Uh, and I think that's really what drives most of us, right? We're, we're all here because we like that feeling of being overwhelmed in a good way. Um, so, you know, thanks again to Q and State Parks for making this possible. Uh, this, this is, these are the kinds of events that we need to do more of. And, you know, in pre preparing for what I might talk about, uh, you know, I thought I might try to be, bring something to the conversation that might be a little bit different. Uh, so I thought I was doing that, and then uh, lo and behold, after observing and, and participating in all of your presentations, like, there's so much that we are all talking about uh, that, that is similar. And so the words that, that really stood out in your presentations um, that I thought might be a little bit uh, a, a, diff a new perspective that I might bring to, bring to the conversation, which won't be the case, is infrastructure and access. Culture, a lot of you were talking about culture of your, your schools and your districts and your communities. Um, partnerships, partnering, and so really what I'm gonna be focused on is the power of collaboration. But I'm gonna really talk about collaboration in the context of a couple of projects, um, statewide, local, regional, and statewide projects that, that we've um, undertaken over the years, and how Collaboration, and I'm not talking about just, you know, especially the county superintendents that are in the room. You know, we know that, you know, by virtue of our position sometimes, we're placed on boards and committees and, you know, people call that collaboration. That's not the type of collaboration that I'm talking about. This is the meaningful, this is the very difficult work where we know that we can't do it alone and we know that by working with other people, uh, we're able and capable of doing things that we could never imagine doing ourselves. And so, you know, that, that type of collaboration is extremely difficult. Um, and so one of the things that I always try to focus on uh, as we talk about you know, how we collaborate and who we collaborate with, um, this is, and I know you can't read it uh, well on the screen, but it, to me it's about knowing who you are. Uh, and so six months into the county superintendency in Imperial County, we've spent the entire first six months revisiting um, and reflecting on, as an organization, who are we? Uh, you know, a lot of times you talk about the what you do, and then hopefully you get to the why you do it, and that, that, those are good things to know. But what's most important to me is who are we? What, what are our values? Um, because if you don't solve that first, and then you, you feel a need to collaborate with others, um, I would argue that, that you, know, you, you might need to step back and really evaluate because everything, we're very strategic about who we collaborate with and for what purpose, and it all comes from this document here, which is, and our vision at a county office and our mission is a little bit different than a school district in the sense that, um, and, and it varies from county office to county office, how they perceive their mission in the community. But I can tell you in Imperial, our mission is about community empowerment. It's about making the community a better place to live, work, and learn. Um, education is a huge piece of that, but our mission is much broader than just education. Um, and so that's what we try to bring to all the conversations, and that's a filter we use when we look at collaboration. But you can see our vision and our mission and our values, again, they underpin everything that we're, we're trying to do. Um, and so collaboration in the context that I'm using it today is, is partnering with others to strengthen our impact in areas of common purpose. And so one project that, you know, so as an example of the power of collaboration, uh, one project that I want to talk about that is somewhat unique, um, but uh, it can be replicable if, if you're able to build the relationships that you need uh, to have something like this work. We created a JPA, a Joint Powers Authority, and this was back in the late 90s, early 2000s, um, Imperial Valley Telecommunications Authority. And so basically we had a vision. We said, well, so what was happening at that time is we had all of the telecommunication carriers, and so Imperial County sits strategically about midpoint between Phoenix and San Diego. And so all of the tele telecommunications carriers at, at the time when they were building out their fiber infrastructures, they needed to come through Imperial County. They didn't necessarily care about serving Imperial County. They wanted to have that path between Phoenix and San Diego connected. And so we said, you know, that's unacceptable. 
And so when I say we, it was our entire community. And so we got together with all of our public agencies, all the school districts, all of the city government, county government agencies, healthcare, you name it. And we all basically came together, formed a JPA, and said we're going to solve telecommunications in Imperial County our own way. We're not going to be dependent on telecommunications carriers. And so um, we had a common purpose. We had an immediate need for connectivity. But we also knew, we were forward thinking enough to know that we wanted to be prepared for the future. And so, and we had lack of, of options. And so, you know, when we started the process of what would this look like, you know, there is a secret sauce to collaboration. And, and you know, and it's kind of like there's different sauces too, right? But you, depending on the collaborative that you're forming, who you're working with, sometimes it's slightly different. But I would argue that every single collaborative is going to be successful. It's about people. It's about relationships, and you know, it, it's about trust. Um, and, and if you don't have that type of um, environment, um, the, then the difficult, the work that's already really difficult is extremely difficult, sometimes impossible. And so, and to kind of call out, and I don't know if this has a pointer or not. Or, nope, it doesn't. Um, so the participating agencies, we have 50. So what we basically did, if you think of IVTA is we created our own private fiber optic infrastructure. We do not have a single telecommunications circuit in Imperial County that serves any of our agencies, schools, or purposes. None. Our fiber optic infrastructure not only interconnects all of the agencies, but it also inter interconnects to a level three uh, POP in our community that connects to CalRAN. So even our connection out of the county to CalRAN, the California Research and Education Network, uh, is all our own private fiber optic infrastructure. So somewhat unique, probably, right? Uh, 50 K-12 sites, 25 city sites, 10 county sites, five healthcare, three higher education, by the way, our community college, San Diego State campus, all of those are connected as well. Uh, and then we have others, uh, small um, agencies, you know, University of California outreach centers, agricultural research uh, centers that they have, and, and so on. So 104 sites throughout the county all connected via fiber optic. Um, this is a logical diagram of that, but you can see that it's highly complex, a lot of agencies, and so that the, this only could come about because of the collaboration, because no one agency had enough leverage or the right leverage to be able to make it happen. And just one quick example of that is it was critical for us to know that we have the planning department, the county planning department, on board with this vision. Why? Anybody want to take a guess? Permits. Absolutely. Permitting process. All the telco carriers, they want to build towers. They want to put fiber in the ground. They want to do stuff. All of that takes permits. So what we did is we said, OK, if your agency wants to do anything that has to do with telecommunications in Imperial County, we passed a countywide ordinance. And so the planning department was on board, not only with the county and all the city uh, municipalities, but they, everyone went in with a common ordinance to say, if they're going to do something, they have to go through a process where they come to, we had a committee, they had to come to the committee and they had to negotiate public benefit. And so public benefit could have been t t to a carrier, we want 12 strands of your fiber infrastructure pulled out and made wholly available to us uh, as a part of the conditions of permitting. Some would do that, some would not. Uh, some would in lieu, they would, in, as a matter of fact, I think I have a picture here. It, well, it's hard to see on the screen, but those are massive spools of fiber optic cable. So we had one telecommunications carrier who said, we don't want you inside of our vaults. So what we'll do is though we have a lot of fiber, and this was at a time when if you ordered gla glass was, if you owned corning stock, it was a good time for you because uh, glass and the fiber uh, was hard to find. And so there was a backlog of orders. So they said, we have you know, X number of miles of fiber cable. We'll give you that instead. Sure. So we had three semi-trucks full of fiber. Come drop it off at our warehouse. Uh, this is a picture of a truck, our crews, our contractors out constructing the infrastructure. They're digging it, they're putting it into the ground there in trenches. Um, let me back up. So the next iteration of this, so you, know, you get the picture, right? Uh, you know, 104 plus sites connected, fiber optic, no telco circuits, we're doing it all ourselves. Um, could only happen because all, all the agencies seeing a common purpose and wanting to work together and, ha and we spent a lot of time nurturing why are we doing this and how is it going to make us all better? How is it going to enrich our community? And um, 
you know, and, and it's one of the most gratifying projects I've had a, the ability to work on because uh, it really is what I think all of us are after, which is, and that the communities are after, which is public agencies working together in meaningful ways. The next iteration of IVTA is we are now, we have, and some of you may have in your counties as well, it used to be called ITFS, it's now called uh, EBS, uh, Educational Broadcast uh, Service, um, FCC licensed wireless frequencies. And so we have, uh, fortunately, also, uh, all the frequency bandwidth on the EBS throughout our county, we own it. So, and I say we, it's the County Office of Ed and four school districts, so there's five license holders. And so what we agreed to do is let's pool all of those licenses, put them into the IVTA, and so our next iteration of the network is to now overlay our own private LTE infrastructure. So when I say LTE, that's your 4G phones, you know, Verizon, whatever. So typically what happens in a community is there's a, a commercial LTE infrastructure, and then your Sprints, your Verizons, and others will buy space on that, and they kind of all share that infrastructure. Uh, we're actually going to do an, a public agency network that is separate from the commercial carriers. Um, the reason we're doing that from the education perspective is that we, we, the initiative that we have is uh, connectivity beyond the classroom. And I think we heard a lot of that today. I mean, but some people are being creative with buses to the, you know, take a bus out, have it be a hot spot, and those sorts of things. So there's different strategies that we're all deploying to try to accomplish the goal of connectivity beyond the classroom. For us, uh, it'll be just the wireless infrastructure that will be ubiquitous throughout the county. But for the public agencies, you know, they're thinking surveillance cameras in downtown and other populated areas. They're thinking a smart metering. So metering for so our water district is looking at it for how they can, you know, read meters. You can see the implications for the community. Um, you know, we're even toying around with the idea, what if we just open it up? What if we just light it up and say, it's just open and available for anyone? You know, what, wouldn't that be wonderful, right? Um, <laughs> so, um, you, you know, so I tell that story and I tell you, uh, you know, that that may not be able to be replicable, replicable in all communities because we had access to right-of-ways and, and poles and utilities and those kinds of things that we have a publicly owned utility company in our county, so water and power are provided by a publicly owned utility. Um, so we had a little leverage to be able to work through that. But you have, all cities have franchise agreements with your cable uh, companies. You have other vehicles that, that typically those silos don't, don't get in the same room and talk about, you, you'll actually have municipalities in many cases where they have an asset, but they don't know that it's an asset. They have a clause in their franchise agreement with their cable company for an INET. Well, they don't know what to do with it, so typically it just goes unused. But we, we know what to do with that, you know, we can use that, but it's, a, it's that collaboration that you've got to get to a point where when people see it, an opportunity, they may not see the gain immediately for them, but they know someone else in the community that would have that. So, um, so that kind of leads to then the statewide program, which is kind of, if you think of IVTA being a local, uh, you know, a regional network infrastructure, we also manage, we're uh, blessed to have uh, done a lot of state work over the years. And so the K-12 high-speed network, and you'll see that one of the three you know, core um, principles in that program is promoting K-20 collaboration. So it's not just K-12, it's also community colleges and university. So to give you kind of a visual reference, you know, it's, it's up and down the state and all over the place. Um, that infrastructure is also taken on uh, public libraries this year. So now public libraries are a part of the scenic or Calrin infrastructure. And so all of your community public libraries um, are now going to be getting um, you know, some pretty significant broadband access. Um, that can be independent of, of us, but I would argue that's the opportunity that we need, we need to collaborate. So all of us in our counties need to be collaborating with our public libraries to make sure that we're maximizing that connectivity for our communities. Um, and, you know, I won't bore you with all the numbers, but basically all the county offices, the majority, 88% of the districts are connected and 79% of the schools. We were fortunate this year, the governor gave us $50 million. Uh, I shouldn't say the governor gave, the legislature and the governor gave us uh, $50 million to basically build on the work that was started this year to really take a hard look at those underserved regions in the state. We still have uh, 
pockets in California where there just is an infrastructure. We actually went out to bid to increase capacity to all the circuits, uh, all the school districts in the state, and there were 47 locations where we received no bids. That means there's 47 districts out there that it, it doesn't matter if they have the ability to pay for it or not, it's not available, there's no infrastructure. And so we're working with Scenic, we're working with our partners in the uh, California Telehealth Network, because they have the same problem. They have remote health centers that they need to connect. You know, Needles, California is a good example, right? There's not much out there, but there's a health center, but there's also, you know, educational needs out there. So we need to work together to get connectivity to those underserved areas. Um, and we have other services, I'll just uh, shameless plug here for the video conferencing services because we are now going to sort of video 2.0 uh, on the system. So now it'll be very ubiquitous. So if you're wanting to use video conferencing in your, in your schools, it'll be agnostic to devices, iPads, you name it, mobile devices. You click on a link, you don't have to worry about knowing a number and dialing, you just share the link, people click on it, they connect. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the ports program and at least do a shout out for the yay, back um, Because this is another great example of how the power of collaboration, if, if you get the right people together and they trust each other and they share their same values, uh, great things can happen. And I'll tell you, when ports was dreamt up, and I, I still remember, so Joe Von Herman's name was uh, mentioned yesterday, um, I, I need to do a shout out to Alan Friedman because it was, Alan Friedman was at the time the CIO for the state park system. So he's the technical person, Joe is a program person. A lot of times in many of our agencies, but especially state agencies, those two people wouldn't necessarily have a strong relationship or a relationship that would, you know, basically set aside their day job and say, let's dream up some more work for ourselves, right? But to their credit, they did. And I remember those conversations in the early days. Um, and it was all based on, we know we can do something here, and there was an excitement. And those are the best collaborations to start working with, right? And, and we've all experienced that. So uh, Ports is a great example, because it's a, an example of a state agency with a need, an education system with a need, how you pair them together through technology to make something better than, than any of those, either of those could do themselves. Uh, we have an initiative at 2015 Q conference uh, was a session on the digital chalkboard, which is a state initiative. And, and I'll just say that I hope most of you, if not many of you in this room, will participate uh, in trying to create, make that what we want it to be. Um, uh, can I, I want to be careful in how I phrase this. Sometimes programs, especially out of the state, um, are almost entirely politically driven. Um, and I, I've had, so I could do hours of <laughs> talking to you about what I've learned in some of this state work in terms of what doesn't work when you try to collaborate. Um, and those are the most valuable lessons that I think we all learn, right? Um, th this is one that we, we said to the state on this one, we will only do it if we can be in control of the collaborative process to make sure that this is not, this is, this is going to be something that the field it's addressing the needs of the field and we have participation from the field. It's not driven from Sacramento uh, and under a political agenda. And so to their credit, they were, they were very much supportive of that approach. And so we're at the early stages now where sort of the, the planning to plan is getting started. So I hope some of you will be able to participate in that. And last but least, I think I'll just leave you with my closing thought. So what are some of the actionable and achievable? So some of us, I noticed Lisa did the same thing. And by the way, Lisa is new to our K-12 HSN Advisory Board. So she will have our first meeting in a couple weeks in Sacramento. So, um, so we, you know, we, we looked at the instructions and it said, you know, what are the actionable steps? So I, I felt like I had to put this slide in there. Um, know who you are. Values are everything. You know, I, I just can't, and then some of you said it as well. I mean, if you don't know that and, and, you know, and if you're working with people that don't share your same values, uh, well, I have a slide on that, hang on just a second. <laughs> Meaningful collaboration is hard work, it's really hard work. And don't, you know, it's, I talk to people all the time where they, oh, well, we'll just work with so-and-so, it'll be easier. No, it's not, it's not gonna be easier. You have to go into it knowing it's, you're gonna put in more effort, more work, more blood, sweat, and tears, but you do it because you know the outcome is gonna be better than what you could do yourself. 
Uh, if you're going into it thinking it's easier, it's probably not going to be that meaningful. Look for partners that share your values and understand this. If it's really important to you, find a core of others that share your passion. Core partners can carry the others that kind of are along for the ride, but if you don't have a strong core, uh, you know, we've all been there. Empower your team. Know when to step out of the way. Sometimes that's because they can do a better job than you can. Sometimes it's your participation affects other people's participation. Um, you know, we all know that sometimes people speak differently when, you know, the superintendent's in the room, right? So sometimes it's, it's just as important to know when to get out of the process. And also know when to walk away and be willing to do it. Um, I'm better at this now. We're, we're awful in education about saying one word, and that's no. Um, you know, a lot of times when people ask us to get involved in stuff, we have a hard time saying no. I, I will argue, and I'm learning this more and more each and every day, we don't have the, the a different use of the term, bandwidth. Uh, we don't have the human resources, the time and energy to do everything that everybody wants us to do. And so I would argue, you know, pick the collaboratives and the collaborations that, that are most meaningful to you and that have the, the greatest chance of bearing fruit. And be willing to walk away from those that, that don't meet that. And then when it comes to technology infrastructure, look to partner. Um, we just had a two-day retreat for Scenic. I happen to be on the Scenic board. Um, it, this is not an issue unique to K-12. Community colleges, CSU, UC even, all of them are struggling with the same thing. Having access to the people that have all the skills and knowledge that they need to run the infrastructure. And so we need, our networks are highly complex, they're specialized skill, we need to be working together. Um, and I think, you know, that's, that's something that I think we don't, we don't do enough of. I think there's collaboration between the schools and the county offices up and down the state but looking to our other partners in our regions, the community college, CSU campuses, and others. So with that, uh, thank you very much. Thanks for your time.